hello and welcome to another episode of the Jump Music Initiative podcast. Uh, today we're welcoming Mike Schwartz with us today and um, I'm gonna, we're going to let him tell us a bit more about himself. So you have a really interesting role in the music industry. We haven't actually interviewed someone in your field before, so I'd like you to tell us a bit of a background on what you do. All right. Well, thanks so much for having me in. And uh, yeah, I guess interesting is the uh, is the the word. To sum it up, the nickname I've been given now is the Rock Doctor, and a lot <laughs> of people look at that, right? Leave it to the Aussies to to nickname you. But I work specifically in musician wellness. I uh, I've been a, a fitness professional for my entire career, so coming up on now 13, 14 years of taking care of people, movement, nutrition, and mindset. And I also speak the language being a musician myself. So a lot of the challenges I started to see was, man, we'd get in from a show 4 a.m. and then you'd have to go back to work <laughs> the next day maybe. And you're just, you're, you're crushed, right? So the, the whole idea of living well as a musician was kind of, it was obsolete. People just didn't do it. So I started noticing the benefits of like taking care of myself, getting good sleep, stretching. I mean, as musicians, we're athletes, right? So you got to consider the amount of work that we do in a performance and the preparation that it takes can be compared to a, a professional athlete easily. So in a nutshell, my role in the industry is to make sure musicians can keep on playing for as long as they want with no obstacles in nutrition, no obstacles in the mindset, no obstacles in movement and, and injuries so that we can all get a lot more awesome uh, music out of everybody for a lot longer. I'm selfish, I guess. I like music and I want more <laughs> musicians to, to be able to play for, not, not to be able to sit down and say, I can't play because you know mm -hmm. we're uh, inspiring and empowering musicians to take care of themselves. Like, can you give us a little bit of a background on, on your own uh, musical history? Uh, how old were you when you started playing? What instrument did you start on? And, and, and just a short little overview of what you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I started playing. I had my first drum set when I was about 16, 14. Yeah, 14 or so. And I had to earn it myself. You know, growing up in Southern Alberta, it was like, no, nope, nobody's going to give you anything. You want to play drums, you're going to get it. And my parents thought it was awesome that I, I love drums. I, I started in jazz and I, I, okay, cool. This is really fun. My parents, my, my older sister, she was like a recorder and she tried to sing and stuff. And they're like, drums are great. You can't be out of tune. Boy, were they wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you can totally be out of tune on drums and you can be really loud. <laughs> so uh, I, I, got, I got underway with drums and just fell in love right away. I, I knew that I would be a drummer. I was the kid in, even in elementary school, I remember being the annoying kid, tapping like pencils and stuff and tapping my feet all the time. I always had rhythm going. I was, loved, loved dance, loved beats. I always picked up bass, got my jazz kind of jazz on in high school. Shout out to Lael Johnson, who really, really inspired me um to to continue with the music part of it and actually get into the arrangements and i fell in love with that part so nowadays um i'm a soul tone cymbal artist i'm a los cabos drumstick artist i've sessioned i've toured nationally i've done i've done the whole thing i'm a touring musician and now i've got this well, with the pandemic i mean i've there's not a whole lot of bands to really play with, right? We got to be socially distanced. So we do a lot of collaboration work nowadays. And, uh, and I've got my own project where I, I produce uh, kind of chill wave mu music, kind of took the producer role in, in that and just put the beats down just to kind of get the creative influence and the, the juices keep on flowing on, on beats and playing around with a little bit of guitar, which is scary, but <laughs> for a drummer, I, I say I'm a drummer, not a musician. <laughs> I'm careful with that. So yeah, man, I do a little bit of everything nowadays, but uh, yeah, I got my roots in, in drums and I'm uh, not the, not the, I like to stay in the pocket. Let's say that. This is, so this is a kind of a tough question given the circumstances of the day, the pandemic in this past year, but, but normally you work with, um, with fellow musicians, with other musicians to kind of train them and get them on a health regimen. Is that, is that really kind of the crux of what you're doing on that end of it? Yeah, yeah. As far as the, the musician wellness side of things, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll work with, uh, and even now, like we're still doing it. It's uh, everybody had to make a shift. 
Um, everybody's gone virtual, which I was actually leading the way that way, because as you can imagine, George, it was like we were sitting, uh, I was either on tour or the musicians that I was working with were on tour, right? So we had to find a way to kind of keep them going on their training. I had to like, we had to get on FaceTime, we had to get on Zoom. Like, back when Are you talking about before the pandemic even? Yeah, yeah, even like uh, I was, I was, I was doing this five, five years ago. I was, uh, right, right. I was five, six years in uh, with really specializing with creatives. And, uh, and we would just find a, a way to do remote training where they would be on the road or they'd be in the studio and I could just kind of pop up on a screen and help them walk through it. Or we'd have a platform where they could pick it up, like basically just an app, right? So they would have the, the pocket trainer literally on their phone right in their pocket and the, the program would be all set there. And then if they had any questions, they could just like fire a note back in a messaging app. So it's, we've, we've come a long ways, but I was kind of leading that way anyways because of the nature of the people that I worked with. Everybody was kind of on the road. We weren't, we weren't always able to connect. So it made sense to have an a, ability to, to remote train. Plus it's more convenient for a lot of people. Their, their schedules can be up and down. So now it doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your location. I can, I can work with you and give you proper programming for, for the musician that you are. Awesome. Mike, I want to know a little bit more about what inspired you to first get into this line of work, because obviously it's not something that a lot of other people are doing, if at all. So what kind of gave you the idea and maybe why don't you think anyone else is really doing it? Oh, yeah. Great question. Um, what first got me into, I'll start with the wellness thing, and it, it kind of transpires into the music part, uh, why I work with the people I work with now. I got into wellness literally by accident. <laughs> okay. I'd always been an athlete and I needed a job out of high school and I didn't at the time, I think I was injured and I was always playing hockey. And anytime you're playing on a team or anything, you'd get like the gym provided for you, but I was injured and I wasn't in a gym. I wasn't, and it was weird to not work out. So as a kid, I just grew up always either playing sports, exercising. And when weight room came around, I was like, cool, this is awesome. I wanted to be tough, bro, you know? So uh, it was always a part of me and then it wasn't. And that was kind of scary. So I got a job in, uh, in a gym in Calgary and just, I, I was ready to just clean the floors, do whatever they had. And uh, instead they had a sales position. I was terrified because they told me, oh, majority of it is like cold calls and you got to talk to all these people and you got to try to get them in to sell them a membership. <laughs> I'm sitting there going like, this is my nightmare. Mm -hmm. I, I hate, you'd never know it now because I love to talk, but I hated to talk to people on the phone. I couldn't pick up a phone. I couldn't even talk to my Omi and Opa, my grandparents. I couldn't talk to them on the phone. So I was terrified. So it was like about overcoming my biggest fear, which later transpired into a lot of what I do now is overcoming and teaching people to overcome their biggest fears. That was mine. So I got good at it. I loved it. And I saw the benefits of when people came into the gym or went out for a run and they came in and they were, they might've been just so groggy or they might've been really, really upset. And uh, I noticed that with like my, my youth as well. Like as soon as we finished practice, everybody had brighter spirits. So that's what really kicked in for me. I was like, wow, I have, a, I have a pretty powerful effect. If I can teach people how to make exercise fun, holy moly, this could be really cool. And then I thought, oh man, I started thinking like my earlier story is like, wow, I started thinking if I'm taking care of myself and I'm still feeling like run down, I imagine the musician friends, my bandmates, the, the bands that, uh, that I had known that weren't taking care of themselves, I imagine they were probably doing worse, if I guessed, if they weren't taking care of themselves. So I just put two and two together. I went, well, if I can have a positive impact in somebody's mental capacity and their physical well-being, and I got, I got really good at corrective exercise because I was the kid that was always injured. So I, I discovered corrective exercise and became a specialist of fixing right? So, oh, you got a shoulder problem? Cool. I got the drill for it because I've had that shoulder problem. I've had that hip problem. I've had that knee, that wrist. I'm a drummer. <laughs> My limbs are broken. So, you know, a lot of people have sore backs. A lot of people have sore shoulders. A lot of people have sore wrists. And that's because of the tendency to, to play for long hours without proper warm up, without proper recovery and without proper optimization. So that's how I got into it. And I just kept on educating myself and learning through experience and going and going and going. And before too long, I got pretty good at it. So that's where we're at now. 
I see. Awesome, man. And so, um, how can young artists prepare for or recover from and optimize their performances? Like what are some daily habits or, or some quick little exercises or, or things that they can do to just maintain a healthy lifestyle overall um, that's directly helps their, their music performance? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, a lot of people really underestimate the power of breath. Most people don't breathe properly. I can tell you first off, the first time I sit down with somebody, it's learning how to breathe and learning how to stand. So I've got a couple really, really cool drills, like the preparation of just breathing intentionally into your belly. It's called diaphragmatic breathing. So a young artist can really start to practice that. And typically when I ask somebody to breathe in for me, they'll, you'll see the shoulders rise up and they're like, <gasps> you know, they take this big breath in and it's all in the chest. But we have a saying where it's low and slow to keep with the flow. So if you breathe in nice and low into your belly, really calm, right before, right before you go sit down before your instrument, deep breath in through the nose, <sighs> nice big exhale, do that for a minute, two minutes, amazing difference. You, you clear your mind, you're able to kind of focus in, pick up your instrument, and you feel much more relaxed. A lot of people talk about getting nerves, and that's the preparation thing. When young artists, especially first performance, I remember mine, man. <laughs> it was at the Ironwood for this band called Mocking Shadows. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being so nervous. But if we can use that, the interesting thing about nerves and anxiety is that it's on the same spectrum as excited. We just mm -hmm. have to change the brain and how we respond to it. And by breathing low and slow and calming yourself down, you can change that anxiety, sweaty palm feeling to excited, right? And then the same kind of thing. I think that's the, the biggest thing. Just breathing is the most important. If there was a catch-all, that's the catch-all. If anybody could do one thing, breathe slow, breathe proper. There's tons of different stretches out there. There's tons, of, but it doesn't matter if you're not breathing because the breath connects the, the mind to the body. And when we connect that, we play better. We're more relaxed. If you ever, if you're a drummer out there, guys, and you're listening, you're a young drummer and you listen back to your track and you come up to that fill. I did this. I'm telling you from experience. Okay. You'll notice your fill speeds up. And generally, because when you start to think, you stop breathing. And when you stop mm. breathing, your body goes into fight or flight. So it goes into a stress sense. So it just wants to get through that as fast as you can. The meter, if you're, if you're being clocked, your producer is going to let you know. <laughs> okay. So if you really focus on your breath work, no matter what instrument you're playing, you're going to have more success. Promise. Mm -hmm. That's, that's an interesting tip. And one that I think most people wouldn't think of. I think a lot of people might think of, of like maybe st stretching, you yeah. know, and I, and of course that's a big one, but you know, I, beyond that, I think a lot of people don't, don't think about it, but th as a drummer, you must obviously have a, a, a stretching warm-up routine yeah, that you yeah, follow. I, I did that. And that was something that came back from, again, my athletic performance, because you never walked into a game. You never, I also speed skate. Uh, I, I was skating nationally as well. So you never went into a performance or got up onto stage without actually doing a bit of a rehearsal. And that's a mind rehearsal. That's a body, that's a physical, mental, you got to eat right too. So there's a lot of key points to it, but I put that all together in an actual method. And that was like, that's what I've done. And that's what I teach musicians right off the get go. The music fit method is exactly that. What I do for preparation and what I've seen successful with other musicians and athletes and anybody basically that wants to optimize their performance, both on and off the stage. Doesn't necessarily have to be a musician, but mm -hmm. you gotta, if you want to level up and be really good with the people that you're around, you got to take care of yourself first. And part of that is preparing for whatever you're doing. So yeah, like a, a simple warm up. I, you start on your back and you raise your hips up to the sky. Here's the key. Any drill that you do in these warm ups is matched with your breath. That's why I say breath is like the, the number one thing. It's not like you're holding your breath. It's very important to, as you push your hips to the sky, you breathe in through your nose, nice and slow. Squeeze your bum at the top of the motion. Let your hips back drop right back down to the ground. Do it again. Easy. And that, that connection with your mind to the movement really sets the stage, no pun intended, for your performance. It really does. That's one drill. You got six drills. You go all the way from the floor up to your feet. And then you feel like you just get this like, ah, you feel like butter. 
you're just like, oh, wow, I feel great. All those nerves, you start to feel this smile come on. You're like, man, that's so much cooler than like what I was feeling 10 minutes ago. And that's all it takes. It's five minutes and you don't need to do anything special. You don't need to go to the gym. You don't need a gym. Okay. You can do this on your floor in the green room or in the backstage or like even right on stage. Right. I've done it everywhere, man. It's you got to get creative, right? Sometimes you don't have uh, you don't have a lot of room. <laughs> Mike, I'd like to ask you. So usually when we have guests on the podcast, we ask them to sort of give their advice to young artists based on maybe some tips of getting into their field of work or kind of how they blaze that path. But for you, this is a little different because obviously it's a very new thing. So if you had to give young artists a few pieces of advice, if they're looking to kind of get into a field similar to this, what would you say? I would say learn through experience. What I learned was that no matter if you, if you're interested in health and wellness and most of the, the reason I, I guess it's so easy to speak to a musician in the same sense is that it's a community. I, I, you're either in a band, like you have to have a team aspect. And the majority of young musicians learn in maybe in high school and jazz band, or maybe they were in uh, orchestral or they were in a, a music appreciation class. And the whole purpose was to be around when you write a song, unless you're a solo artist, you're generally collaborating with a bunch of other moving parts. The same thing applies with wellness and musicians is that if you're taking care of yourself and you can inspire, empower and educate your bandmates, that right there is is huge like by you taking care of yourself you're going to then inspire others around you to take care of themselves so if you're if you're looking to get into this field yeah of course we we've got certifications for it like that's what i do now is i i help people do that because i see in the industry it's not that musicians my age or young uh, or or older it's not that they don't want to be healthy they just don't have the tools so my best recommendation is learn through experience stay fit yourself and then just take up any sort of education that you can if you're interested in um if you're interested in in preparing better look into meditation look into these things that are kind of woo woo, or they were anyways, when I was doing this, I was the weirdo for sure. <laughs> but nowadays, like meditation is kind of on the forefront and we see the benefits of what it can do to again, come back down to that low and slow. Take a breath work course, come talk to me. <laughs> like It's like, I can direct you to who you need to talk to if, uh, if you are interested in any of those fields. And we specialize with movement, nutrition, and mindset. So the, the young, the young artist out there, this is a total chance to change the way the industry is. You're the new generation. You guys can lead with health. And that way we're going to see your generation go much longer before you start to have injuries, before you start to, because it's a big battle on the road. You're, you're fighting sometimes in a van. Like I've had to sleep in the van. I've had to sleep on bare floors. Sometimes you didn't sleep. I remember being in a Toronto show and I didn't sleep that night. It was insane. <laughs> it's like you, you can face a lot of obstacles in, in a healthy lifestyle. So the better prepared you are for that in taking care of yourself when you do have the opportunity to, the better you're going to come out of that, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. That's some great advice. And one more thing I want to ask you about specifically is if you have any advice as to... Um, uh, lifestyle like you um specifically within our industry substance abuse drinking uh drugs uh, unhealthy diets sleep hygiene all that sort of stuff i know is like combined and part of it but how can young people um maybe find a balance between um you know, ex exploring the benefits of being an adult and making your own choices, but also being responsible and um, healthy enough to do your job. Yeah, which is the the job of music is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and um, I'm so happy that you got that because that's a big thing. That's because I find just to add to that is that people think it's either all or nothing. It's like you're either healthy or you're not healthy. There's no in between. And when we think about a lifestyle 
it is all encompassing. I'm a holistic lifestyle coach. I'm a deep health coach. I worry about your social. I worry about your, and when we say social, it's like your relationships. We worry about how you are with your parents. How are, how are you with your best friends? How are you with your, your partner? How are you with uh, your workplace? That's a social hygiene. We got to make sure that that's pretty clean. We got to make sure that, yeah, of course, movement, like your daily movement, that, that will, will pile up. You know, if you're working out too much, that's also a lot of stress, right? We got to consider all the types of stress that we have. We want to limit the stress. And in order to make these decisions, it can be overwhelming. We think, oh, it's all or nothing. And it's not at all. I have this saying that if, if, if I come across somebody that's feeling that it's all or nothing, it's very binary, it's black and white. I'm like, okay, cool. Where are you right now? And any listener out there right now, pick a number between zero and 100. 100 is your ideal self. Zero is the hospital or worse. Okay. That's the, that's your dead. <laughs> that's flatline. Okay. Where are you on that scale in terms of where you really want to be? What's your ideal self? Now pick that number, keep it in your head. Think of it this way. You may think, oh, I'm only 40. Oh, I'm only 45. Oh, I'm only 52. Cool. 48 more days and you're a hundred percent. If you work at it 1% every day, it's baby steps. That's all it is. So when you think about, okay, I want to balance this. This is exciting. I can go to the bar and I can go hang out and I can do all these adult awesome things. You can, you absolutely can. It's about not necessarily balance, but making a conscious decision about the choice that you're making. The trouble that we mostly have is that it becomes habitual to get mm -hmm. into these cycles. The, the bar will pay you in beer any chance they get. Okay. And if you just associate playing a show with the bar, like that's the association that we make. We make that connection. If we stop, breathe, low and slow to keep with the flow, and you make that conscious decision and you decide at that time, because you're in your driver's seat, you're in your own driver's seat. You got agency in your life. If you sit down and go, I'm going to have this beer because I really appreciate having a beer with my friends, but I'm going to have one beer or I'm going to have, you know, a glass of wine, but I'm going to stop it right there. Cause I'm making a conscious decision because I know I've got three more shows on this tour and I don't want to mm -hmm. be a complete wreck when I get out of it. Right? So taking at 1%, making that conscious decision, stopping, slowing down, making sure it's a conscious decision. That's key. And if you do that, you're an adult, <laughs> you can make that decision. And then that, that just know that if you make more choices to have pizza, <laughs> Instead of a, a salad, you're going to look more like a pizza. <laughs> okay. So you're not going to have the energy. You're not going to, if you're, if you're drinking all the time, you're going to, you're going to feel that, but that's a decision you've got to make. The challenge is to not have it just become a subconscious habit. So just slowing things down and thinking about your decisions and then working on it 1% every day. And if you get on that 1% bus, some days you'll have two, some days you'll have one you'll get to that hundred percent and then you're, it's a sliding scale. You'll, you'll have to climb a new mountain, you know? Yeah. Great answer. Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> go for it, um, the last thing I wanted to ask you was, so with all our guests, we, we started this new thing called desert Island albums. It's kind of like a fun little segment on the show. So I want to ask you if you were trapped on a desert Island, what five albums would you take with you? Oh man, I was afraid of that. <laughs> oh, that is such a hard question, man. Okay. I'll go to the ones that really like the ones that I can just listen to time and time again would be big wreck that, oh man, I, I both of the big wreck albums would be great, but I'm good. Oh man, that's so tough. Okay, let's start. Let's start backwards here. Let's go Mother Mother with Oh My Heart. Definitely there. I would have to put in Run DMC's Greatest Hits. Mm. Okay. I'm a hip hop kid. I, I don't know what happened growing up in Chester Mare, Alberta. I don't know how it happened, but hey, <laughs> I love hip hop. Run DMC is one of my favorite bands. Led Zeppelin, the original album. Um, John Bonham was the reason I started playing drums. Um, I'm going to go back to the big wreck because big wreck was again, like the modern day, uh, 
John Bonham kind of feel of how I really got into music. And I would go with In Loving Memory Of. That album was fantastic. The tracks with uh, that song and and The Oaf. And I think that's four, right? We got one more? One more. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't want to get this one wrong. Holy smokes. <laughs> oh. Man, what did we put? I don't know why this is so difficult. I love music so much. <laughs> it's a hard question. Oh, I'm just trying, I'm trying to think, like, what have I not covered? What else do I listen to all the time? You know, Anderson Pock, Malibu. Oh, yeah. Anderson nice. Pox Malibu. I would go there because I'm really big on that. Like I stay in the pocket. I love listening to that album. It's just, it's got enough roots. It's got enough soul. It's a really great production quality. So like encompassing everything that I am musically, those, those five albums would be my desert. I think the, the desert <laughs> island. Good answers, man. That. That's great. I know it's not an easy question. I, we come on the spot. <laughs> like, man, I didn't have time to prepare. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And that's, you know, that's why we do it. But we kind of want to shock you. But Mike, thanks so much for taking the time to uh, speak to us and our listeners today. And thanks for a uh, fresh perspective on, on you know, um, a, a take for artists in this industry. And, and we'll be sure to put up your info so people can get a hold of you if, if they're interested in more. Thanks so much, Mike. Hey, thank you guys. It's been a blast. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Cool. All right. Cheers.